I'd like to cover today is um, what Autodesk is doing in simulation for digital prototyping, and then talk about the NAS TransLinkCAD product, and talk about differences between linear and nonlinear analysis and show you a demonstration just to introduce you to the interface in the main, show what it looks like, how it works. We talk about more complex assemblies and how we would handle those. And then we can have a summary and questions at the end. So as you know, the um, this sort of design concept to manufacturing process um, can be achieved using many Autodesk products. There is an area between design um, and manufacture, design and engineering, where, where simulation should really be used to validate designs before they're confirmed. Um, you can then try out different uh, design comparisons to see which may sort of meet the requirements that you're after. So this can really reduce a lot of physical prototyping requirements, a lot of physical testing in order to get to a final design. So we cut down the number of iterations required and allow you to validate up front before you commit to a final design. And this will save a lot of time with um, product development and also a lot of cost savings as a result. So if we can predict product behavior up front, we can understand the designs a lot better, see what effects there are on product um, behavior and they make necessary design changes and not just to confirm that it will work okay but it's also optimized so can we actually um, improve the design can we take material out can we make it more efficient so Autodesk uh, takes simulation very seriously since 2005 been acquiring many simulation technologies and companies so this includes things like CFD for fluid and uh, gas flow through devices or around structures. We have structural analysis for looking at buildings, working to international codes, working with concrete and steels. We've got uh, simulation for plastic products, simulate how they can be manufactured, if they can be manufactured, predict the quality issues, material changes and stresses within the components and we have com composites analysis where these materials can be typically continuous fiber layups and this program will show you how they will perform how they will fail a lot of these composites are very light very strong replacing a lot of metals and um, they're very expensive materials so it, it is necessary to do simulation up front to optimize the design and take advantage of these materials so on the structural mechanics side, we have um, Nastran NCAD, uh, Autodesk Nastran and Simulation Mechanical. So we'll go into those uh, in a bit more detail. So we have Nastran NCAD, which is the focus of this presentation. And this will be embedded inside the CAD system. Simulation Mechanical, some of you may have heard of before. This originally came from the product and company called Algor in 2009 it was rebranded simulation mechanical it was competing with ANSYS in the U in the US and selling over here it's since been renamed Sim simulation mechanical and it does now contain some NAS trans solvers and this works outside of CAD it can be launched from um, CAD products from with inside CAD products like Inventa you can launch into mechanical mechanical will open mechanical is very CAD neutral, so you can read and file small systems. We also have Autodesk Nastran, which is the sort of um, the product that came from Nastran when we acquired Nastran technology two years ago. And this requires a third party pre and post processor like FEMAT or HyperMesh. Uh, we don't sell those, so you would have to purchase those from another source. A lot of existing customers already have this interface, and so continuing with the Autodesk Nastran product. So if we look at Nastran itself, then as you were, um, Nastran was developed by NASA back in the 60s. It stands for NASA Structural Analysis. 
And there were various strains of the code that were released, became public domain. And one of the strains was NEI NASTRAM. And this is the code that Autodesk chose to um, acquire. It was the first code to port onto PCs and Windows. It's very um, fast and efficient, very accurate. And we have the NASTRAN team working for Autodesk. And the main NASTRAN developer who wrote the, the NEI code is working for Autodesk now. So it's um, very well validated by um, National a Agency Finite Element Methods and Standards, NAFEMS. There's verification manuals available for every release. There's verification manuals available with inside the software. So it's been validated by customers against actual tests. It's been validated against the competition. And it goes for standard testing. And it is industry trusted, so it is well known in the industry as a tr trustworthy solver. So it's typically used in aerospace, automotive, defense, marine, vehicles. But as far as we're concerned, anything that needs um, a check on how it will perform in service, whether it's consumer, medical, electrical, any design that has to perform in service, then NASTRAN simulation can be applied to it. So it doesn't have to be um, a large component, a large industry. It can be any industry, any size of component. It can be a single part or an assembly. So Autodesk NASTRAN in CAD will be available inside your CAD system. So if you have a license of this, then the NASTRAN NCAD environment will appear inside your CAD system. It's a networked floating license, so it can be shared between users. Also works inside SolidWorks, and if you have machines with Inventor and SolidWorks on, then the, license, the same license can be shared between the two. It keeps the user working inside the CAD environment without having to come out and learn a new a new interface, a new environment entirely. So it will help with the workflow and enable designers to check their designs very early on and compare designs, help them to make decisions about their designs without having to go to an end analyst or perhaps an outside agency which takes time and costs money. And if you then get results back saying the results aren't so good, you're then going to make a design change and then put it through that process again. So the idea is that this is upfront analysis with a um, the NASTRAN solver and allow you to get your products to market a lot quicker now that they've been validated. Now, if you're have you been using Inventor Simulation? Some of you may have. Then that has some FEA capability. It is limited to what we call like linear statics. We can apply a load. We'll give you deflections, stresses, and strains. Um, but it assumes the stiffness of the component doesn't change under load. The mental simulation can also look at natural frequencies of a design. It will show you the lowest natural frequency that will cause it to vibrate and the shape that it will go into. Natural NCA can do those, plus a lot more that you're seeing on the screen here. So we can look at buckling, it can give you the multiple of load that can uh, make a structure um, collapse or buckle. It can perform thermal analysis, this could be steady state or the thermal loads could be changing with time. You can look at composite materials where you've got different um, uh, composites of material through the thickness, different laminates, different plies going through the thickness. We'll show you how they will perform. If you have parts contacting each other, then that can be analyzed. You can do fatigue analysis, some impact. You can look at nonlinear as well, which I will discuss in, in the next section. You can also apply vibrations. So this could be random vibrations, um, frequencies to the whole structure or any point of the structure to see what the response is in terms of stresses, strains, and deflections. If you have um, nonlinear materials, um, 
like rubbers, which can be hyperelastic. Perhaps this is forming a seal in your component, in your design. Then these can be analyzed as well. These type of materials can compress up to 500% and still recover their shape or be extended by that same amount. So what do I mean by nonlinear? There's two types of nonlinear. One is uh, what we call really geometric nonlinear or large displacement. So the graph on the top is showing you stress against strain or load against deflection. And typically in a linear static analysis, you would apply all of the load in one step and it measures the, the deflection. And that slope is the stiffness and that's assumed to, to remain constant. But in reality, particularly if your parts are thin walled and the surface area to thickness ratio is very high, then it's quite likely that under load the structure may stiffen, as we see on the bottom left, or it may actually soften under loading response. So geometric nonlinear or light displacement analysis applies the load in small steps and then measures the stiffness response to give you a much more accurate result for deflections and stresses. We also have material nonlinear analysis, and this allows you to go beyond the elastic limit of the material. So again, stress against strain or load against deflection. Most materials or most analysis will work in the elastic limit. So you apply a load and then remove the load. The component goes back to its original shape. But beyond the elastic limit or yield point, you get into what we call the plastic region and deformation becomes permanent, the, there's no recovery back to its original shape. So natural NCAD can also take you into this area um, by looking at material nonlinear properties. So what I like to do now is just introduce you to the interface. Put you on speakerphone, so I hope you can still hear me okay. And what I'm going to do now is let's go into um, Inventor. So hopefully you can see, see my screen OK. And we have some components we can look at. I'm going to take you through a um, simple component to begin with so we can get used to the interface. So this could be like a plastic stool, and we're going to be looking at trying to load on this space here. See how the stool responds. So if you have an, uh, an, a license of Nastra and NCAD, you can go to your environment and, they will, and Nastra and NCAD will take you into the Nastra model tree, into the Nastra environment. Okay, and what we can really do is just work along some of these icons at the top, or we could use a model tree. So one of the first things we can do is select the material. And there's two databases. There's the Autodesk Material Library we could select a material from. And there's the Inventor Material Library as well. You're familiar, you may be familiar with if you're already using Inventor. So maybe this is an ABS material, you can choose that. And the material properties will actually go in. And these can be edited at this stage, if you so wish. And you can also save material. If you make a change, you can save that as a new material. You can also import materials that are already set up in the CAD system. So these will come in and be shown on the tree as they're read in. The next thing we can do is go to physical to associate the material with the component. We've only got one component here. But I've also got a choice of elements I can use. I can use solid, shell, beam elements. Because it's thin walled, I can actually put a shell mesh on. 
give it a thickness. I can also apply this to, to solids. I can actually put a shell mesh on top of solids. Or I could do solid elements for the assembly as well. Perhaps I'll show you that in the next example. And the next thing we really want to do is to apply some constraints. So we're going to assume that this is on a like a matte surface, and these feet are constrained, so they cannot be, they cannot move. So we can actually apply constraints to these feet. And we're using X, Y, Z translations and X, Y, Y, Z rotations to constrain. And we can have any combination of these. We can turn some constraints off or on. We also can take advantage of symmetry. So this could be a quarter model if we so wanted to, and apply symmetry constraints in the relative axis so that it knows it's connected to itself. These constraints then appear in the tree, and at any stage we can edit these or delete them even add new constraints if we so wish. And this thing I'm going to do is to apply a force. So we have loads. And we can apply forces, moments, pressures, gravity, remote force, rotational force, in force motions where we're saying how much it moves. And there's also thermal conditions we can apply too. So I'm going to just select this top face and say that the load on this is typically the weight of a person. I'm using Newtons in this example. But the units can be changed in advance. You can change your unit type in advance. You can see the load has been applied. What we haven't done yet is apply a mesh. So we need to apply a mesh of elements to this. And the mesh of elements has been applied. If we so wanted to, we can edit the mesh. We can add further elements to certain faces or certain areas. We can change the element size that we've used. And if you have more than one part in your assembly, they, they will be listed here. And you can change the mesh size for each part. There may be areas you're not so interested in, so you don't need a fine mesh. But typically, two or three elements between surface boundaries is normally sufficient. So I've signed the material the constraints and load, so it should be ready to run. And it's running now. So I'm running a linear static analysis. And it's completed. And now we can start to look at results. So there's a list of results available. One of them is displacement. And it's saying it's, the center is moving about 202 millimeters, which is quite excessive. We can animate this, we can save animations. We can also look at the stresses in the component. So there's, there's various stress results available. Typically, we may look at von Mises stresses.
we're getting values up to 113 megapascal. The yield strength of this material is about 31 megapascal. So we can actually look at the stress levels above the yield strength. And these colored areas are exceeding the yield point of the material. So it's, it's quite, these colored areas will sort of deform permanently. So this design appears to be a bit of a disaster. It's going to deflect excessively and have stresses above the required limit. So it could mean a redesign, maybe make it thicker, add ribs. But remember, this was a linear static analysis. So that's not allowing the stiffness to change. So what I prefer to do is to change the analysis type to a nonlinear static analysis. You just see here there's other analysis types. Uh, we can do buckling, vibration analysis, fatigue, and also thermal analysis. I'm going to choose nonlinear analysis. And by default, this will apply the load uh, in 10% steps. You can increase this number. So it's going to apply the load 10% steps and then allow the stiffness to change. So I'll just rerun the analysis now. It's going to take just a little bit longer because it's running analysis at every step that's being applied, the 10 steps. If it becomes highly nonlinear, then it will take smaller steps to complete. So it's doing iterations within each step, and it's comparing current solutions to previous, and with that, if they're within a certain tolerance, it then goes on to the next step. It's on step four now. Well, the log file, the summary file that's been displayed here can be saved into a file. Almost finished. Okay, so it's completed. And once again, we can look at results. We can look at deflections. And before, we were seeing about 22 millimeters of deflection. Now we're seeing about 23 and a half millimeters, which is much lower. We also can look at the stresses. These come down from 113 to 63. 
And now we can look at the areas that are above the critical stress for this material. Rescale this display. And we, and we see that it's really just small areas on the corners here, which are which the, um, just above the critical limit of the material. So maybe some local thickening or just a small rib. But this design is much better than first thought with normal linear analysis. So nonlinear analysis using geometric nonlinearity is always more accurate than linear analysis for such structures. And this can be applied to other materials, other structures. So this is a quarter of a of a tank. And the purple areas are the areas where there's liquid in contact with the tank. So it's been constrained at the bottom. And we've got symmetry constraints on the edges to show that it's connected to each other. And again, a simple linear analysis. Will give us results. So this is a stainless steel component, a stainless steel tank. This is quite large. It's showing very high stresses in the component, in the quarter section of the tank. And about eight. This is an inch, it's about eight inches of deflection. So again, for such structures, a linear static analysis wouldn't really be accurate enough. So once again, we rerun this in the nonlinear analysis. This runs a bit faster. So this is a tank containing liquid. So you can import a solid model and put a shell mesh on it. And the, and the results are, are quite different again. So we're seeing lower stresses, an order of magnitude much lower, and also deflection going from about 8 inches to 3.7 inches, but in different areas. You can also apply this software to uh, solids and assemblies. So I won't actually run a full analysis, but in this case, we may have different materials in here. So I could actually import the material from the CAD system. They appear here, stainless steel and steel carbon, or I could chew them in the normal way. You can also associate which material goes with which geometry. So stainless steel could be this um, component here. And then if I do a new association, I can say the carbon still applies to this component and this component. So now it's matched up. You could also put a mesh on. Motion is very fast. So these are solid elements. And we use tetrahedral elements. And then we can apply our constraints and loads as I've been showing you before. Um, if you've got structures with many bolts, then you can bring in the bolts and mesh those as well, solid. Um, or they can be represented as simple connectors. So there is a way of adding bolts. So if I go to connect is new, I can say that I'm going to add a 
bolt. This could be a cap screw a bolt and it could be preloaded as well. Maybe it's going through this hole. So rather than import the solid model, and that would have to be matched, add an element to the model size, we can just simply say, okay, which is the top of the bolt? And where is the end of the bolt hole? It's created a two-dimensional bolt for us. It looks 3D, but it will do two D calculations. Maybe there's a washer as well. And you can specify the material of the bolts, so we can say what the material is bolt material in the washer. And this will save a lot of analysis time if you've got many bolts in your in your design. So this is an example of a another nonlinear analysis where we're looking at putting a sort of collar in this uh, this case. It's got like a stainless steel wall, sheet metal. And as you retract this collar and um, this tool, it um, forces the collar outwards into a press fit situation. So we can simulate the tool moving backwards, compressing the collar into the, the plate. And you can look at the stresses and strains, make sure this is going to work, make sure the device will work. So as I've mentioned, you can simplify your models if, re if required, to simply suppress the bolts and washers, and just represent them, the 2D bolts that I've shown you. And this will save a lot of analysis time. There will still be results on these bolts. They will be in the form of um, beams. So there will be results for the beams. So you can look at beam stresses. And this will represent the, the stresses in the bolts. Or if you're particularly interested in the bolt, you can model it as a, include it as a 3D component. You may also be involved with more complex designs, machines, and this, you know, if this uh, introduces more complexity. There could be different operational loads. We may have moving parts. There could be many different materials. There may be loads to consider during shipping and assembly. And machines, devices can fail because they're overused or overloaded. May be exposed to higher temperatures or cycles of temperature change. The contact parts moving and cause failure. The loading may be unstable, asymmetric, could be subject to vibrations. And it may be that the device isn't really suitable for what it's intended. So typically, uh, some companies may use their experience of previous projects to make decisions, hoping the next one will go better. You may be using uh, hand calculations. You may be outsourcing to design agencies for the FBA work. That has some cost and time associated with it. You may have an expert analyst in your company um, who does all this work, but that person can then become a bottleneck if they are overloaded with all the work that goes to them. So you may then just say, OK, well, let's get it to pass an um, initial FBA analysis, and we'll go from there. So you may build a full our prototype and then test the machine that way. Very risky, very time consuming, very expensive. And if your machine devices don't work, then obviously there's reputation, there's liability issues, it may impact your profits, it may allow your competition to uh, have an advantage, and it can extend the product development time. So what I'm just going to show you now is uh, an example of a more complex machine with the help of um, an animation. So this is a, a machine that handles uh, cups with lids. So it 
packages these cups, it fills them with fluid. And particularly at the end here, we've got a station where the, there's a vacuum to lift the lids. And there's some nest which lifts the cups up as well. And this is being previously designed with a rack and pinion assembly. It was physically tested. It worked very well. But now they want to increase the capacity of this machine to handle more cups. So typically you would perhaps extend the arms that we're seeing in order to house more cups, house more nests. So in Inventor, you would simply increase the length of this arm, change the parameters, and it will update your assembly. But what we don't know is, is it going to work? Are there going to be any problems? So we can take a sub-assembly of this got the C channel and the arms. We could mesh them with a solid mesh. But we can um, take advantage of Natron NCAD to give us some information. So initially, we, we may want to see how it vibrates, what, is, what are its natural frequencies. We can choose this from the analysis menu. And this would be the normal mode analysis. We then assign the elements, solids or shells, assign the materials, as I've shown you before. We can apply constraints to simulate how it's been held in the machine. So uh, not preventing it from moving in the Y, not, uh, not preventing it from rotating about the x-axis. We can set contacts by We can set them to be welded or bonded so that they don't move apart. There's other contact types which allow separation, sliding, etc. And we can also account for the mass of the um, components on top of these arms by just simply adding a mass constraint or a mass load. So rather than model all the components, we can just represent this as a concentrated mass, mass on each, um, each point on the arm. And then when we do our frequency analysis, we'll take this into account. Frequency analysis just takes about 30 seconds to run. And it will give us frequencies that the structure will vibrate at. And we can look at the different frequencies and see what they are. We really want to make sure that these frequencies aren't seen in operation. So it will show you the shape and direction it will be going into. What we may be also interested in is, is to see what happens when the machine's operating. So these arms will move up and then stop. So we can simulate that. We're going to give it an initial velocity. We're going to give it a velocity moving upwards. And we can actually have this time base. So we can say that it's going to move up and then suddenly stop. So it's, it's moving under a certain velocity. Then after a certain time, and stop moving. We'd like to see what the response of that is. So we can put on some minimum damping, like 5% damping for the analysis. And we can say what the time steps are. So we can have 50 time steps saved at every point zero zero three of a second. This would take about two minutes to run. All these time steps can be read in and displayed. So we're looking at results against time. So we're looking at the stresses as it moves up and comes to a stop. I mean, again, we can see these stresses are going to cause a problem. We may be more interested in the deflection. So we can take a group of elements at the end of these arms, a group of nodes or points, 
can actually graph them. And what we're seeing is that the initial movement is up, and then it stops, and we get some vibration. This is about three millimeters of vibration and of movement after it stops, and that could be enough for the cups to fall off. So perhaps it's not too satisfactory. So we can change the thickness of these arms, either in the product itself or before we finalise the design. So we're making them, the arms thicker. Simply rerun the analysis and see what the result is. So this is where you can check out designs based on the results that you're getting. And now the, the actual response, the actual vibration is less than one millimetre, which is acceptable. So knowing, knowing the final thickness, we can then go back to our inventor model and update the parameter, just confirm what its thickness should be. You may have different models already ready to, to analyze with different designs. And now we know that this design will work. We can now handle more cuts. Okay, so just to sort of summarize, um, this is showing you the capabilities of Inventor simulation with inside Inventor Professional. Uh, and that's trying to encode it in the middle, and you can see the analysis capabilities are more comprehensive. On the right is Simulation Mechanical, which so works outside of the CAD environment. And where you see N is where it's, it can use Natran solvent. The natural ink ad uses all the natural solvers. So mechanical can do things like um, DDAM, which is looking at torpedoes hitting submarines or vessels. And simulation mechanical can also apply electrostatics like voltage and current to a design to see how that responds. But I think you'll see here that natural ink ad is but a lot of capability. There's no additional licenses required for any of these uh, analysis capabilities. It's all included in the one product. So it's, if you remember the acronym ATTN, that it can handle assemblies, it can handle bolted connections, it can have time-dependent results, consider the effects of temperature. You can go non-linear, either material or geometric more accuracy. So today you may be doing your designs and throwing them over a wall for someone else to analyze, an agency or a specialist. This can delay the process, get to a final design. If the design fails, it comes back and you start again. Uh, with Nastran NCAD, you can do a lot of design iterations up front uh, with upfront analysis just to verify the design, see the effects of design changes on performance. Before you finalize on the design, you still can go ahead and make a physical prototype, but obviously the number of prototypes will be reduced. And you can still give it to um, an analyst for further analysis or checks, but this will reduce the development time um, by a large degree. And this is based on a you know, customer example. So we have customers using the software, TE connectivity making these sensors, working in harsh environments. They really needed non-linear analysis capability, which they didn't have with an existing simulation product. Um, they, they use SOLIDWORKS, and they're using Nastran NCAD. So GT Engineering, they're really quite happy to use linear static analysis for most of their parts don't have a non-linear response. But they were tasked with using an FEA program that was recognized in industry. So they can generate reports based on NASTRAN solvers. And these reports you know, are respected and trusted by, by their customers. And this is just a lot, list of customers using um, SOLIDWORKS, um, which is a sort of competitive to Autodesk Inventor. But they've chosen NASTRAN NCAD for the, the accuracy, the efficiency, and, and the workflow that it offers them. Front. OK, 
Okay, so it's um, it's designed. Our simulation products are designed for use by designers, engineers, and analysts. It's designed to fit into your workflow, to speed up your workflow, make the workflow efficient, give you feedback uh, much quicker. It can read in um, any CAD system that can be any CAD model that can be read into a CAD system can be analysed, and it also allows. And results to be shared between different products. So we're looking at Inventor here to Nestor and Incad. And you can also take advantage, you can actually output Nastran input decks into other programs for further analysis. Okay, so if you have any questions You can send them to me at eric.henryautodesk.com if you think of questions afterwards that you're not going to ask now. Also, any sales questions can go to Gary Edwards from Grey Tech, who's sort of organised this, this uh, web session. There's also a link to a website where you can get more information about our NAS Trading CAD product, and there's some demonstration movies there. There's also some products on our SimHub site, many other simulation products with some sort of um, examples of how they're used. Okay, so I'm just looking at some questions now. What are the customizable? Okay, sorry. Um, let's see if I can uh, unmute people. Okay, so I, I, I have. Hi. Oh, yeah. oh, I have unmuted people. So, are, are there any questions for now? Yeah, I was just looking at the comparison oh. matrix. Yeah. Oh, okay. Let me go back. It mentions customizable presentations. Okay. And I was wondering if that's anything like. Um, the inventor publisher, or is it just relevant to the? Let's have a look. What I showed. Uh, was it on this slide? Um, yeah. It's on the one that says post processing. You might not have it. I've got. A, I've got a printout. Oh, okay. Um, Customizable. Yeah. The. Um, so is that referring to an Astra and Incad? Yeah, there, is, there um, is a report generation uh, regenerator, a report generator in Astra and Incad. Mm -hmm. So, and you can save images and animations, so you can put them into a template of your own design as well. Okay. So there are different ways of presenting the Astra and results. Yeah, I just wondered if it looked anything similar to the Inventor Publisher. Um. Probably not. No. I think it's more of images and um, animations. Right. Okay. Um, I think there are there are things you can do with inside IMCAD um, on the visualization side. So oh. I think very early on, probably not the best example here, but there are ways of um, displaying stress results on components of the component. Yeah. To highlight the assembly, those sections. To highlight, yeah, for presentation purposes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Okay, um, got another question. Is there the possibility to simulate cyclic loading, rolling road tests for wheels? Um, yes, it can do fatigue analysis. So um, wheel tests have come up before actually. It seems to be part of the standard test in some industries. So things like impact testing, um, dynamic fatigue can be done. And the so you can apply loads off and on, either by time, or we can do a fatigue analysis, and it predicts the number of cycles to failure. Um, it will need fatigue data to be entered. I think this can be sourced from perhaps the material supply or literature, um, but it then can be applied. So typically, you run your normal analysis first to apply the loads, and then you run the fatigue analysis, and it predicts the um, number of loads to to, to cause failure, and it uses micromechanics theory. So, normal analysis may not show a part failing, but under cyclic loading, it could fail with time because microcracks can develop and then propagate. 
So it sort of accounts for that. So um, the answer to that is, is, is yes, from what I've um, heard before for such applications. Okay, so um, I hope you found it very useful to understanding what NAS Training CAD is about, what it can do, what it looks like, what applications it can address. Um, hopefully you'll see that it's quite user friendly, very fast. Um, and as I say, if you want more information on this, then please feel free to carry um, contact myself or Gary for more information. And if you want more in depth information, we're happy to supply that. So there are some movies on the um, the link on our website which shows you um, buckling examples, thermal stress examples, and you get a better idea of, of it ha how it handles that. So I hope you'll find that it's something that you could use and implement and um, take advantage of. It's very comprehensive um, in what it can offer compared to what you may be using today. Okay, so I can't see any more questions or hear any more questions, but uh, if not, then um, I say thank you for your time and attention and hope to be in contact with you soon. Okay, thank you. Bye.